Hello friends, welcome to Input Output Campus. So today in this video, we will discuss about essential latest coding question. And this question is very very important because in the essential coding test, the previous question repeats. So you have to prepare for all the coding questions, and you have to watch all the videos in this series. And you don't know which question will be repeated for you because it's random. So you have to prepare all the questions. So today we will discuss about a very very important coding question. Okay, so here is the question and the question is jump game. So this is a game where there are steps numbered from 0 to n. So you will be on the end step on the start of the game. Okay, your goal is to reach the 0th step at the end of the game with minimum number of jumps. So here you can see in the input 10 is given. So 10 is the nth step. So you have 10th step. Okay. So you have to go to the 0th step but you can go there by some certain rules. So what are the rules? So see here friends. If the given steps number is given, you are allowed to jump in by 2 steps below at maximum so the input is 10 that is this is the end step so if you want to go below to this step then you have to check here if this is a even or odd so if this is a even then you can go the below steps by dividing by 2 and there is a condition that and if the step is odd so if our step is suppose odd suppose this is 9 so if the step is odd you are allowed to jump to one step below so if our step is odd, then you can go to its below step by reducing it minus 1. Okay. So if it is odd, then we will subtract minus 1. And if it is even, then we will divide it by 2. So our target is to go to the 0th step and we will count the number of steps. So here our input, that is the end step is 10 and this is even. So if this is even, then we will divide it by 2. 10 divided by 2, which is 5. So this is step 1. Next, we will check the 5. So 5 is odd. So if this is a odd, then we will subtract minus 1 from this number. So 5 minus 1, that is 4. So this is step 2. So next, we will check if 4 is even or odd. So 4 is even. So will divide it by 2. So 4 divided by 2 equals to 2. Okay. So this is step 3. Now 2. So 2 is even and will divide it by 2 and 2 divided by 2 equals to 1 and this is step 4. So now this is 1 and 1 is odd. So 1 minus 1 that is 0. So we have reached to the zeroth position and this is the step 5 so you have to count the number of steps so to reach the 10 to 0 we need 5 steps so our output will be 5 here so this is the question and I hope you understand this question okay so now we'll write the code using simple uh, for loop and if else condition okay so let's write the code here and we'll write the code using c++ and First write the basic point of the C++ plan, that is as include iostream using namespace standard int main and inside this main function write an integer variable that is int n and take the user input so for that write a scene n so then write a function suppose the name of the function is jump game so from here pass n and we will write the same function here before this main method so write here int jump game and write here integer n. Okay. So inside this jump game, we'll write an array. So array of size n plus 1. And next we'll initialize its first two value as 0. That is array of 0 equals to 0 and then array of 1 equals to 1. Okay. So next we'll write a for loop. So for and i equals to 2. Why i equals to 2? Because we have initialized the first two positions 0 and 1. So we will iterate from i equals to 2. So i less than equals to n and i plus plus. So you can write here i less than n plus 1 also because the size of the array is n plus 1. So if it starts from 0 then we will go to n that is 
less than n plus 1. So inside this for loop, we'll check if i is even or odd. So for that, write here i for central 2. So this will check if i is even or odd. So if i for central 2 equals to 1, that is, this is odd. So if this is odd, then we'll store array of i minus 1. So our i equals to 2, so i minus 1, that is 2 minus 1. So 2 minus 1, that is 1. So array of 1, you can see here in array of 1, there is 1. So we'll store this value and 1 to this array of i. Okay, else there will be another condition. Suppose there is an integer max and the value of the max is i divided by 2. Okay, so we'll initialize the max with i divided by 2. So next there is another integer suppose int answer we will initialize it with int max. So inside this we will write a for loop and we will iterate from 1 to max. So for that write here for int j equals to 1 j less than equals to max and j plus plus. So inside this for loop we will find the minimum between this answer and array of i minus j. So what is array of i minus j? So for i equals to 2, the array of i minus j will be 2 minus 1, that is 1. So array of 1, so array of 1 equals to 1 and will add 1 to this value, that is 1 plus 1, 2. Okay, so which is minimum? 2 is minimum. So 2 will be stored into the answer. Okay, and outside of this for loop, we'll store this answer into the array of i because this will be the final. Okay, so after calculating the minimum value, the answer will be stored into the array of i. And finally, after this for loop, after calculating everything, we'll return this array of n. So return array of n. From this array, we'll print it here in the main function. So for that, see out. So our code is complete and let's run it. Okay, friends. So here is an error in line number 17. That is, we have used in max and in max was not declared in this scope. So we have to include a header file in which the in max is included. So include the header file here. So has include and the name of the header file is C limits. So in this header file, the in max and in min is included. Okay, so let's run it again. Okay, it's completed successfully. Okay, so so here our input was 10 and our output is 5. So let's keep the input as 10 and let's see if the output is 5 or not. So let's keep 10 here and press enter. So our output is 5. So this is perfect. Okay. So you can run again. So let's give some another input. So our output is 10. Okay. So in this way you can check the test cases for this problem and this is the whole code and hope you enjoyed this video and if you find this video helpful then please like the video and share it with your friends and the most important thing is please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon